This is chapter 13, which is called Linear Regression. And in particular, it's the part of the chapter that talks about are X and Y related. And when I mean related, I really mean linearly related, that they follow a straight line. And of course, the steps, the, the, since the answer is yes or no, it's a hint that we're going to be doing hypothesis testing, and the hypotheses are this versus that. This means X and Y are not related, because the, because the scattergram would be, uh, you know, a scattergram where the X and Y are clearly not related would be a horizontal line with a slope of zero. This is X and Y are related. It's worth repeating. And again, when I say related, I really have to really add the word um, uh, linearly, re linearly related. And step number two is to calculate the t, the t, call it t statistic, B1 over SYX, et cetera, which we talked about last time. Step number three, this is step number one if you want to put a category. This is step number two, doing a calculation. Step number three is coming up with some diagram with the boundary based on the alpha, which in this case we chop in half, the degree of freedom is N minus two. And if you look at the, up in the t-table, you get this number here. And finally, step number four is to make an arrow relating this number to the boundary. In this case, clearly, it's in the reject region, which Kim very nicely labeled reject A0. And since we rejected A0, we believe the H1, which is simply x and y are not, oh, sorry, I got it backwards. So, so the, the H1 is beta 1 not equal to 0, x and y are and then I'll might as well put it down already. We have linearly related. And so step number two is the calculation. Step number three, step number four is to reject A0. Since we rejected it, basically we believe a, uh, the H1, which is that they, they are related. So the answer is they are related, and that's perfectly correct. It's like, like half the test of is doing an example like this. Uh, so I have two questions now. Uh, second, uh, can anybody, in this case, we split, we split the alpha in half. Why do we split it in half? Yes, Alex? We're gonna because we set it up, since it's not equal to zero, it can be greater than zero or less than zero, we've got to de deal with both possibilities. We split it in half without repeating the whole theory of chapter nine about type one errors, et cetera. Uh, the question now is, can anybody think of a situation where you do not chop the alpha in half? Like on a test, can you tell yourself, well, we always chop it in half? Or is there a situation where you have to re read the example carefully and sometimes you chop it in half, sometimes you don't chop it in half. Can somebody think of an example where you do not chop the alpha in half? Um, Mazzaro, you raise your hand. No, no, that's very good. When, it, when it's going to be a one-tail test, then you would not chop it in half. But that's really begging the question. The question is, when will it be a one-tail? How would you remember that the one-tail, the two-tail depends upon how you set up the hypotheses. So the question is, how do you set up the hypothesis, or what kind of problem would you have where it really is a one-tail test? Do you want to? Follow through on that or somebody else? Yes, Alex? That's what the whole thing is. Are they independent or dependent? We're trying to prove are they independent or dependent. Oh, before I forget, let me start giving out these papers. And Paul? OK, uh, OK, uh, that's correct. And you want to pass it back to Marco and pass it back to the guy next to him, Zugaro. And this is for you. Thank you. Well, again, at least it most really works in chapter nine. In chapter 10, it's not going to be, it's not really, Paul, it's not really the, exactly the right answer. Anybody want to say something else about this? Now, what kind of, when, I, when we say X and Y are related, what do we mean by that? Either, there are two possibilities. Either it means they're positively related, as one gets bigger, the other gets bigger, or they're inversely related, as one gets bigger, the other gets smaller. Remember, this is X, this is Y. So in this case, the slope would be greater than zero. In this case, the slope would be less than zero. So in this case over here, is beta 1 not equal zero? I don't care if they had this relationship or that relationship, as long as they have a relationship. But you could easily imagine the problem, and again, I, I, I don't know if it appears in the homework or not. Um, I really don't know. And it, I, some years, some years, they keep changing the book. It's by now the 11th edition. Some years they had it in the books. I don't know if they have it now. I haven't checked, and I'm sorry about that. But sometimes they ask you, prove that X and Y have a positive relationship. That's what the question is trying to show. There's one gets bigger, the other gets bigger. In which case, how would you modify, if that in fact is the question, try to prove that X and Y are positively related. Or, or if the book actually says, prove that X and as, one, as X gets bigger, the Y gets bigger proportionally or linearly. How would you modify this? How would you modify this to, to incorporate that? Yes, Tingru. Uh, 
So you make this into a bigger than zero. Now once you make this into a bigger than zero, not bigger, no, no, no. This, this would be the, okay, the eight, x and y are positively related. It would be beta one greater than zero, which means that the opposite of that, meaning I don't care if it's zero or less than zero, as long as it's not bigger than zero. So we're trying to prove that B1 is bigger than zero. So how would you handle that? How would you, if that in fact was the more complicated question, how would you handle it? Well, the first step is to modify the hypothesis this way. Secondly, the calculation would stay exactly the same. But step number three, instead of making the rejection region on both sides, you'd only make the rejection region on one side. So what would, what would it be the, the net effect? You don't chop the alpha in half. That's the only difference. We've had that before, the basic concept, and you do, this, do, it, do it here as well. So in case there is a homework question like that, or if on the test I decide to make it extra challenging, which I hardly ever do, but who knows? I might get frustrated enough I might do that. Um, that would be the solution to the problem that you if the quest so you if so the point is when you're reading these questions you also have to look for a direction if it simply says are they related or not related the previous formulation was correct but if they say are x and y inversely related then of course to be as one gets bigger the other gets smaller that will be a less than that will be a negative slope so just be aware of those subtleties that can also affect the calculation it can affect the whole problem and now we're moving on to a, um, in fact, maybe you might want to, uh, Brian, we'll call this, I don't know, uh, uh, our X and Y related, the continuation of that. Uh, that X and Y related is not, I, as of last night, wasn't on the, it wasn't on the, on the okay, great, okay. So this will, this will be like a continuation of that. Now we're gonna start a totally new topic within the chapter 13. And it follows logically from this, not from this thing, but the original thing. The original thing was, are they equal or not equal? And can somebody tell me, please, what, what you might think would be the next thing? I'm doing this in a different order, the order than the book. So what we have so far is we have a bunch of data. And you collect the data, you make a scattergram, you figure out the B1, you figure out the B0, you figure out how close the dots are to the straight line by the SYX. You then ask yourself the fundamental question, are the X and Y truly related? So let's say the answer turns out to be yes, they're truly related. What would be the very next logical thing to do? They have to, yes. Not prove, calculate how related they are, okay? So are they very much related? Because you can have two variables that are slightly related, that's one situation, or they can be very tightly related, which you have a better situation. Of course, this boils down to jumping ahead a little bit. If the dots are very close to a straight line, like this maybe, that means they're very highly related. If on the other hand, you have a situation like this, you know, they're still more or less a straight line, but it's not a perfect fit, that means they're less related. And of course, you could also have a situation like this, which means they're related, but it's a negative relationship, in which case you want to, you'd have a, neg a minus sign in front of the whole relationship. That formula or that concept for measuring how correlated, meaning related together, the two variables, is called the correlation formula. So the next thing we're going to learn about right now is how to calculate the correlation. That will take us about two minutes. And then we're going to learn about how to interpret the correlation. That might take us 10 minutes. Yes. Like this? Yeah, like no, no, well, well, the exact opposite. If it's like this, means there's no relationship. Let's think about it. Let's think back to fundamentals. As x gets bigger, what happens to the y? It's not changing, so they're not related. Y stays the same, no matter what the x is. That means they're not related. Here, as x changes a little bit, y changes by more or less the same amount. That means they're very much related. Yes? Yeah, because the SSE tells you the SSE is the standard, uh, the question was, is SSE related? The answer is yes. SSE tells you essentially how close the dots are to the straight line. Here the dots are very close to the straight line. So the SSE would be a small number relative to the scale of all the numbers. And here SSE would be a large number. So clearly, now you would think that the formula for the correlation should have the SSE built into it. And in fact, it does. There are different versions of the formula. In fact, the book's version has you divide something by the SSE and you get the answer. I'm going to show you a different formula which is related to something else that we learned about. So you can relate, again, all these formulas are interrelated in many different ways, and you can show there are many versions of the formula, but I'll show you one, my particular version, which I don't think the book has. Um, so, so, so Nick has a very good question and deserves recognition, especially if he had his name out, which he doesn't. But he says this, maybe this is related to the SSE, and the answer is it is. Now, but what else is it related to? What, what other formula do you think would be very much related to our X and Y related, besides the SSE. Again, when I see B0, B1, SYX, SSE, SYX and SSE is the same thing. Uh, 